Hi, I hope you're doing well. I'm here today to talk about the new moon happening. That's going to be happening on June 6, 2024. It'll be happening at 16 degrees Gemini. And if you looked at my overall view for June 2024, we already have in this new moon, the 1648 channel that I talked about. And that is the channel of talent. So immediately, as soon as we get into the first new moon, we're talking about talent. Now, for this particular um, new moon, there's a lot of, it's like a mixed bag. But the cool part is there's this mystical kind of um, exciting potential within the energy as well. And again, it is about being open and aware, but there is potential to be only looking for the big ticket item, you could say, as opposed to the little things. And this is what we're really looking at for this new moon, looking at the little things. And so if you look at logical energy, which is quite prevalent within this within this new moon because of the full channel being activated, the, the key with logical energy is if you look at the gate nine, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. It is always like one, two, three, slowly, slowly building goals as you go and you eventually get to the destination. And the journey is, 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 you know, getting better every time as you move forward. And that is kind of what all talent is, is going to look like when it comes out of logic. And that is a 1648 channel. So this is really looking at the skills, the, the mastery, the expertise, the logical perspective of what you can bring to the collective. But having said that, we also have the 360 channel between Mars and Pluto and this is bringing this innovative um, kind of piece to a puzzle. And again, I talked about this in the June overview about Mars bringing in a new cycle that is bringing this brand new beginning, a new seed, a new something to plant. But the, the key to, to get what you are meant to plant, to know what you're meant to do is really being open and aware. And there's no pushing to get the energy to move faster so that you can understand what it is you want to do or um, wh what you're meant to do, like what your path is. Because a lot of times we go around and we don't really know what we're um, here for even. But with mutative energy, you'll get a little kind of an inkling and, and it'll say, okay, well, you know, go this way. You know, this, there's something there for you. And, and you might say, well, what is there for me? Well, there's something there. And I'm not going to tell you anymore. So you have to trust. And then, you know, you you move forward and then you see something and you go, oh, okay, that's what you said. There, there's something there, but what else is there? Like, is there something else? And then, you know, you're not given it until later on. And this is really what we're talking about with the 360 channel. So you, if we look at both of these energies, we have the 1648 talking about skills, talents, um, making things better, as well as the 360 in play. These are the main channels that are in place. So you bring these two channels together and we have a melding of logical energy as well as individual energy, which really doesn't always work together well because uh, logical energy is collective energy and the collective needs to be shown why this new pattern should be put into the collective and the new pattern would be some innovations. But having said that, within this new moon, there's potential for these kind of energies to work together, to meld together, to bring some sort of new innovations that are in their infancy, new seeds that are going to be um, born that maybe you will get an inkling or maybe you already have an idea of what you want to do and it's giving you a little boost to give you the energy to sit with it for a little while and then again later on in the month on june 20th right into july we have the same channel the 1648 activated again which can give more of a boost to continue to work on that thing to bring it to mastery but also you're bringing in the individuality or the innovation of this new thing. So it, it's hard to explain, but it truly can be this, this um, melding of the both. So you have the brand new innovative energy, but you also have the support of the collective. So there's this potential for this new seed to be found. There's potential for something to be planted, but there's also the sun and the moon in the gate 35 line six, which is basically saying, well, if it's not, 
if it's not going to be the ultimate experience, the best thing in the whole world, and I can't have a guarantee that it's going to work out exactly the way I want it to work out, I'm not going to do it. And that's where we you could miss out on something that is important for you because you want to see everything you want to have everything in one in one sitting so in other words you go to somebody and they say okay here's your life i'll give you the whole plan for your life forward even a whole year ahead to exactly that you know this will happen this will happen this will happen this is what what you want with the gate 35 line six and we know that doesn't that doesn't happen it's not possible to know in a year which doesn't seem like a very long time if you start the beginning of the year and then you do a reflection at the end of the year to see all the things that have happened in your life the things that you hadn't expected the things that changes that had come about it, it, it can really be impactful and so if you don't start something new, if you don't take an opportunity, it will never have an opportunity to grow that seed that Mars is giving us all with the 360, because you have the 360, which is bringing the energy of the root. You have the root and the sacral center together, being, bringing this pulse of mutation. So it is bringing something really powerfully new, but there's a potential for you just say, no, I'm not interested because I can't see everything. And so this is something to be aware of and to be prudent to know that there might be something more than what you see. And, and that's one of my favorite sayings, just because you can't see it happening doesn't mean it's not happening. You know, just because the universe isn't showing you every little step of the way of the things that are coming to you doesn't mean that it's not coming to you. It just means that you don't see it. And suddenly things can change, right? in a minute. And that's what mutation is really about. So this is an opportunity to take it if you want or not. And those are, you know, that's always your, your choice on what you want to do with your life and what, what kind of choices you want to make for, for yourself. So if we circle back to the 1648 channel, the channel of talent, the one kind of stumbling block that we see with this energy is that the gate 16 line one is in detriment. And basically this is just dreaming about this idea of becoming a master in something and, and not really doing the work and, and just imagining. And this is really coming with the same kind of, um, feeling of the gate 41, although it isn't the gate 41, it's like that same kind of ambiance where you're, you're just dreaming of all the good things that you could do and all the fantasies and those types of things, but you don't necessarily put the work and energy into what you need to put it into. And so nothing really happens because logical talent absolutely needs you know, rest, wash, rinse, and repeat, wash, rinse, and repeat. That's literally what you do until suddenly you become skilled in whatever it is you're doing in your life. And so this is saying you might feel as though you're just going to dream about it and you just think about it and you buy a book, but you don't actually read it. But this is saying, you know, you have to do the work if you want to get the rewards. And that's a necessary part of logical talent it to be recognized. There's a difference between having a thought in your mind. I, I've heard this a lot where people will say, well, you know, I've always wanted to write a book and I have a particular book and I know I could, you know, it's a great story. And I mean, you know, I, I've been thinking about this book for a very long time and I've written a few notes and, you know, and, and you'll say, well, how long is it, you know, well, how long you've been looking at this? Well, you know, 10 years, we'll see, that's it. You can dream about it, but unless you sit down you know, butt in chair, as they say, and write that book, it is just a dream. And any good, you, you imagine the best ideas never being unlocked because somebody didn't bring it out into the collective. And this is what this energy is saying is bring your talent out to, to the collective, bring your skills, whatever you have to give to the world, bring it out. Because it's not of any value, just bumping it around in your head. And not everything's going to work perfectly as you expect it to work, but you'll never know unless you try. And that's the key. And Mars is connecting with Pluto, as I mentioned. But the one thing that is really nice about Mars is, you know, right now, especially because we have the sixth and third line energy sort of thread it through this new moon, it is about being your own person, deciding what is correct for you, deciding what you want to do, and yeah, you can get guidance from people. You can get, you know, people giving you advice, 
those types of things, but always making the decisions from your heart, from your soul, from the place inside of you that feels like this is correct for you, as opposed to someone saying, well, this is correct for you, you should do it. You know, they make a lot of money doing this and, and, you know, you should do that because it's really good thing for you and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you're, you're kind of on this path that you never chose, but you feel like it's the correct path because you've been told that it is the correct path. And maybe it will bring you a lot of abundance and money. And maybe it is a path that is lucrative. And maybe it is a path that a lot of people have traveled and done successfully. And yet you're feeling like, oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted to do. But within this energy is Mars is saying, I will take my own advice. I will decide what I want to do. And if that means I make a mistake, that's okay, because at least I've learned something from it. Um, I was watching a... Um, uh, a, a tarot reader uh, called Dove and Serpent the other day. And he said, um, experiences are the fertilizer of your future self. And I thought, what an impactful and adept saying to really e explain the, the process of life and that experiences are our fertilizer that make us grow. And I love it. And um, it's one of those things that kind of stuck with me. So this is basically saying you, you're going to do it your way if you want to. And you have the choice to do it your way, whatever way that is, and to go your path because it is correct for you and it feels right. And that's all that matters. And finally, to wrap a bow around everything is this magical thing, which I feel it's kind of like a magical energy. That is the earth in the gate five, line six. And this is a very mystical line because it doesn't have a detriment, only an exaltation, which I think is kind of interesting. Yes, you could say it's unbalanced, but on the other hand, it is... Um, it is mystical because it is kind of like a universal entrance into your life, which we all have at some point. We know that. But it comes into your life and it kind of sweeps you away from what you were always doing because the gate five is really about patterns and, and things that are always the same and doing the same thing over and again. The gate five is also really connected because it's a 515 channel to being within your flow. And by being in your flow, you're in the universal flow. So think about it. You're in the car and it's in your, your flow, you're going to the destination that is correct for you. And suddenly you get on this big highway where everybody's going to this great pot of gold, you could say, and that's the universal flow. So everybody's going to their universal flow. So it's all connected in that you'd only be on the right road to get on the universal flow road, you could say, if you're in your own flow. And this is what this energy is really talking about. And if you are in your own flow, where I always say that's the only place where all your gifts are, you know, you can, you could be going on somebody else's flow or going on somebody else's path and, and you're not getting what, what is, what belongs to you, that what is destined for you because it isn't for you, it is for them. And we all have our own set of, uh, we all have our own path. We all have our own flow. And as with a lot of six line energies, the gate five line six is going is acting a little different than um, you could say regular logical energy because regular logical energy is predictable. It's patterns. It's all those types of things. And yet this is where the, we have the sweep of the universal energy that comes in and shifts your world and changes your trajectory. And suddenly you're going somewhere else. But it's the best thing that's ever happened to your life. And, and this is really what we call something that's unexplained, illogical, something that was not expected. It just kind of came out of nowhere, which is completely unrelated to logical energy, more like abstract energy when you when you look at from that perspective. But having said that, a celebrity that has this in their body graph uh, in a prominent place is Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote the book Eat, Pray and Love. And you know, while going through a divorce, she suddenly was uh, swept off into all these different places around the world, ended up changing her life. She wrote the book. She, you know, had a movie made from the book and suddenly everything shifted in her reality out of the blue. And it wasn't anything that she planned. It was just something that kind of showed up in her trajectory. And that's what this new moon is bringing us all. It's like this, you know, and, and and it's not going to happen the same for everybody. Like, that's the key. We all know that. Everybody has their time. Everybody has that moment when their shift happens. And being patient and waiting for that shift to happen is probably one of the hardest things we can do. 
But if you have this inner knowing to, to, to kind of align yourself with your flow, with your trajectory, with your knowing, even with your body consciousness, then that means you're not going to miss anything that is meant for you. And that this might be an opportunity when something shows up in your trajectory that sweeps you away into something brand new that you never expected that completely and utterly shifts your whole reality. And I really hope that happens for some of you out there because that would be an amazing thing. And with that said, I hope you have a beautiful and inspired new moon and I will be back again soon. Until next time, take care and bye for now.